stories about the bright side of education. Somos Sunny Side. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Somos Sunnyside. We're coming live to you today from Desert View High School, and so I, I have some some very uh, unique guests here that are going to share their their student experience, share their stories, and so very happy to have them here. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves as we get started today. So let's get started here. To my left, I'll go first. Uh, Ivan Angulo. I'm Ivan Angulo from Desert View. I'm a senior here. Um, yeah, I've been in the Learning Ambassadors for like one year. All right, cool. Welcome, Ivan. Hi, I'm Anato Lara. Um, I'm a junior here at Desert View High School, and this is my first year in the Learning Ambassadors. Hi, my name is Enrique Rojo. Uh, I'm a junior here at Desert View, and I've been in Learning Ambassadors for one year. I know it's we're, we're headed here to the end of the school year. for So for the seniors, it's it's the countdown, right? You guys got about a month left. For you juniors, you got a whole year left, right? And so what are your, what are your feelings? What are, what are you guys feeling right now? I know... They, they talk about this thing called senioritis, you know, you know, the, the springitis and, and, you know, so what are your thoughts? Huh? I think we feel the senioritis more than they do. Oh, you do. <laughs> huh? you're, you're not even a senior <laughs> and you already feel senioritis. Wow. No, I mean, I, I, that's a new one for me. I would say that junior year has probably been the most stressful uh, out of all of them. Yeah. Um, I think we... <laughs> But I feel like I was, I've also taken it the most serious, mm-hmm. right? This is like this is the year that I started joining clubs. I started doing mm-hmm. different things. I started playing sports um, a lot more, and just trying to be more part of the school rather than like isolated and just going to my classes, right? So I just putting myself out there more this year. Good, good, and you know, I mean, I remember dating back when I was in high school, mm-hmm. and I look back at my freshman and senior year. For some reason, my junior year was the hardest year as well. And I don't know why, but that's when my grades dipped a little bit, and that's when things were a little bit tougher for me. And, and I don't know, maybe it was senioritis, and maybe you're, maybe you're onto something here. But um, you know, I was I was kind of a social butterfly too, and so. But I, I think it's exciting, you know. And I think you guys that are seniors, you, you have bright futures ahead of you. You're great students. You got options, and um, you know, those of you that are juniors here, Enrique and Alonso. Um, you know, you still have a whole another year to, to plan your success, right? And and you have options and opportunities that are coming your way and experiences, most importantly. So speaking about experiences, we're here today to talk about the student experience. Um, you know, we, we have a graduate profile, as, as hopefully everybody knows, and I know a lot of students probably don't go on the Internet to look at our mission and vision statement, <laughs> but but I'll let you know what it, it's, it states anyway. You know, our... our uh, Mission and Vision talks about all students graduating college, career, and community ready. It also speaks to this piece of that when our students graduate, they leave us with a strong sense of identity, purpose, and agency so that they can achieve the conditions they want as they as they move forward you know, in, in their careers with their future endeavors. Mm-hmm. And um, you guys are my witnesses. I didn't read that off a wall or a poster or anything, right? It's just <laughs> in my head, right? Cause, because that's... Um, what I'm very passionate about and you know I want students to have that unique experience where they feel prepared right where they feel prepared as they leave high school and they feel like they have choices and and that looks different for everyone right I mean it doesn't mean that every single student is going to go to university or a two-year college some will go to trade schools some will go to military opportunities um, but there is something for everyone out there right and it's mm-hmm. it's it's this piece that we call identity, purpose, and, and agency, but probably equally importantly is is the passion, right? Um, because I, I do believe if you follow your passion, you will identify your purpose. So tell me a little bit about Learning Ambassadors. That's a club here at Desert View High School. I know you guys have been doing it for a couple years, and and you guys are the rock stars of the of Learning Ambassadors. And so tell me what, what it is for our listeners. What What is that? What's the experience like, and and uh, you know, give us give us a, a little bit a summary about that. Okay, I guess I'll go right. <laughs> seniors, um, right? Yeah, yeah. we'll start with our seniors. So I guess learning ambassador had started last year, and I didn't know that. Um, I mean, I don't think there's any way I could have. But this year, like at the start of the year, I had Peru and Benton for I had Peru for Calc and Benton for English. And I think maybe like two weeks in to school. They kind of approached me and they're like, hey, we have like this proposition. And they're talking about uh, meeting for like 
student agency and stuff like that. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, this sounds like interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I showed up and we just started learning right off the bat like what agency was, the building blocks, how to like implement all these things. Um, so it was like this period of learning about our voice and like learning about agency and what that looks like in the classroom. Um, and they gave us tools. And I feel like Benton and Peru's class, apart from learning masters, was like the first classroom that I had that actually had this way of teaching and mm-hmm. like instruction. So it was interesting to live it out and learn about it at the same time. So it was this moment of learning about it, and then we went into actually like advocating for it mm-hmm. through like conferences, like Aurora, um, the PDs that we led. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. And anything you guys want to add to that? Tell us, you know, want to go deeper with what is Learning <laughs> Ambassador? So I, I want our listeners to have a clear picture mm-hmm. of what the club represents mm-hmm. and what you guys do and and what what you know what's what's been a difference for you and we'll get into the difference later but let's talk a little bit about more about the club i think um a big way that they've represented it like for us is like quote unquote judging but not like the bad kind of judging like mm-hmm. you're able to like self evaluate not just your learning but like the learning of like teachers because like teachers are learners students are learners um and we're kind of all going through this movement together of trying to change how it used to be like before it used to just be a teacher lectures for an hour mm-hmm. you write notes on your notebook and your class your class is done mm-hmm. but now we're trying to have more collaborative groups um and kind of shift the learning into not doing it for like the grade but just doing it to learn it. Awesome, awesome. And I, and I love that you mentioned students learning, teachers learning, because at the end of the day, we're all learners, right? We mm-hmm. all have to continue to learn. And, and this isn't, it shouldn't be, um, it's the right word I'm looking for. Nobody should be offended mm-hmm. by that statement, right? Because, I mean, I think you, you talked about some important pieces of collaborative groups, learning collaboratively, versus how you learned maybe 10 years ago, right? And so does anybody else want to add anything to that conversation? I guess in just like the most general sense of how I can explain what we do is we're just trying to shift the mindset from I'm doing this to get the grade, like he said, but I'm, but we're trying to shift it into a fact that you're doing this for the learning itself, mm-hmm. right? So it's no longer about, oh, I want an A in this class, but it's about I want to understand this material and mm-hmm. actually be able to use it and practice it and then go and show other people this as well. Yeah. You know, it it brings me to this piece of, like, you know, I think about this a lot because we have what we call um, compliance learning, right? Or I don't even know if we call it compliance learning, but it's it's this compliance approach versus uh, this this approach of learning with with evidence of learning, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm I'm just going to use myself as an example. I was a teacher a long, long time ago. And so when when I first got into teaching and I taught at the high school level, like, I thought I was, like, you know, top-notch teacher and cool teacher because I had control of that classroom. It was classroom management to the T. My, my students were sitting in rows, and they were quiet, and they were doing their work quietly, right? And so, you know, back then, that would probably look be looked at as, man, that's pretty effective. That's an effective teacher, right? And um, But it's changed. You know, now now we call this, there's, there's this controlled chaos, right, this controlled collaborative spirit in the classrooms where you know it it shouldn't be compliance driven and i know you you alluded to you guys are alluding to grades right this Mm -hmm. this piece of hey you do the assignment you get the grade for it no matter if you learned or not right it's this piece of all right i i was i complied i'm gonna get rewarded um versus it's more important for you guys as you're stating that you understand the learning that you can provide evidence of learning and, and the grade lands where it lands, right? I mean, hopefully, I mean, we grades do matter. I don't want to downplay that grades don't matter. Grades are important, right? Because it's a reflection of, should be a reflection of, of your learning. And so, um, you know, that's, that's um, the light bulb really turned on for me there. And so, you know, you mentioned it earlier, Ivan, that you guys as learning ambassadors have had the unique opportunity 
of sitting on panels. Um, you went to the Aurora Institute, they're a professional learning organization, and you guys were on a panel in front of a bunch of educators answering questions. You've been in the setting where you've presented at board meetings. You presented uh, professional development sessions here at Desert View High School. And so um, talk to me a little bit about that setting. How does that, you know, make you feel? What was your guys' aha moment? You know, when, when you started with Learning Ambassadors, where was that aha moment where you felt you had a shift? Because every, every learner should have a learner stance, right? Mm -hmm. Every learner should have a learner stance. And so talk to me a little bit about that. What was your aha moment? I think for me, um, so me and Ivan went to the Aurora Institute. Um, but the shift when it clicked for me was even before then, when we had a practice panel here at Desert View High School. And I, like, I can't think of it clearly, but I just remember, like, my mind was clear on my learning at that from, from then moving forward just because of the questions being asked and also like i was able to retain memories of like classroom environments and like classroom culture um where i was just like wow like this teacher did something really great but then i can reflect on like another teacher that may not have done like the best of work and I could like reflect on that and just see the difference between that. And that's when like I was really able to change my mindset on my learning. Anybody else want to share their aha moment? <clears throat> I guess for me it was kind of just like I didn't know. But I walk into my chemistry class this year and the first thing I tell Alonso, because he sat right next to me, I was like, dude, why is this classroom so happy? Like you, like I walked into that classroom and I just felt the environment was. You didn't like, want it happy. No, I was happy just like place? I wasn't used to it. Like I wasn't used to classrooms being like super like bright and uh -huh. like colorful and like a good vibe. Mm -hmm. But like I was like mm -hmm. I've always been good like energy. sitting down, do my work, mm -hmm. turn it in, and then move on my like the to my next class. Right. But that one was like I sat down and like I was just like, dude, why is this classroom so happy? And at that time, I didn't know what learner agency was. I didn't know what the learning ambassadors was. But I remember when I had came to, I think it was like the third or fourth meeting, because I had no idea. Like, they had already gone over learner agency, and I had, like, missed those two meetings. So then when I came, I was trying to catch up to what they were doing. And then finally, I remember we were talking about it, um, and it clicked. And I was like, oh, that's what it means. Like, that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I talk about learner agency, I always talk about that moment, because it was just like... Mm -hmm. Even just walking into that classroom for the first day, you could just feel like that classroom was going to be different mm -hmm. than the other classes you had. Right. And, you know, and, and this isn't to, like, knock on teachers. It really isn't because mm -hmm. I think our teachers work extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And they're always trying to provide the best learning experience for our students. Um, but, you know, I, I, as you mentioned earlier, we're all learners and, and we all want to move to this sweet spot of being effective, right? And so... You know, this is important. This is an important dialogue amongst us because we need teachers to hear this. We need students to hear this. You know, what I'm hearing is at some point you guys took ownership of your learning and you're not afraid to have these conversations with the adults, with the teachers, right? And giving them feedback because feedback is an important piece of, of us developing as learners, right? And, and teachers, I know they try to be super intentional with, with the, their instruction. Um, so when we say things like, you know, there's one teacher who, who just um, provides a lot of opportunities for learning through discussion, through activities, you know, high-level activities. And then there are some teachers that still do the, um, like the, we call it stand and deliver, right? They, they, they're they mm -hmm. delivering the instruction, delivering it to you. They're expecting you to, to learn it and then show that you've learned it, right? But the, the, this piece of collaborative dialogue is, is super, super important. So... Um, you know, I, I think when I what, what I want to hear a little bit more from you guys as well is, um, you know, what what are agentic behaviors? So when you say I finally understood what learner agency was, what are those agentic behaviors? You know, that that we can explain to to other students listening and other teachers listening. So do you, you guys want to take a stab at that one? Evan does really great at explaining <laughs> the building blocks. Um, so, all right. I actually did the. We did the, my group did the PD for the building blocks. Okay. So the four building blocks are metacognition, self-regulation, self-efficacy, and autonomy. 
And basically... Like prof- sound like a professor when you say <laughs> all that, man. That's basically, true. like, all your agentic behaviors will stem from those building blocks. Uh-huh. So, like, metacognition, when you, like, in uh, plain words, is, like, thinking about your own thinking. Uh-huh. So setting up a journal, reflecting, that, those are agentic behaviors. Um, autonomy, when you, like, ask for help from a teacher, from a peer, that's agentic behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I like, these agentic behaviors can be facilitated in a classroom, but... Most of the time, it's like er, like encouraged, but not forced. Like, mm-hmm. there's a few teachers that are like, talk to your neighbor, mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, right, you know, like right. as opposed to those classrooms that set up like those like norms and they set up the room for you to actually be for everyone to have to participate. Yeah, yeah. Well, like have to, but like want to want, want to participate. To. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, when you talk about like those agentic behaviors, I you know I, I look back at. And I know I experienced this, and I hate to be, bring it back to my learning experience, but I know a lot of other students have felt this way, including probably you guys at some point. I remember being in classrooms where the teacher would ask a question, and I knew the answer. And I, I, didn't ha- I wasn't brave enough to raise my hand and answer the question, right, when I knew it, because I was more scared to be wrong mm. and... Um, I, I felt like I was going to be embarrassed if I was incorrect, right, and amongst your peers. And so sometimes we're put in those tough situations, and, and then somebody would answer the question, and, and I would say, like, darn, I knew it. I knew that was the answer, right? I should have answered. I should have done it. And so, um, you know, so, so I want you guys to elaborate on that a little bit. So when we talk about, you know, identity, purpose, and agency, what, what does that mean to you? You know, what does that mean to you? I think before all of this, um, like I, I've experienced, I've experienced the exact same thing, and for me, it was based off of like my own ego. Where like, I didn't want to answer the question because like, if I got it wrong, my ego would go down, mm-hmm. and I wasn't comfortable with like that happening. But ever since I've joined the Learning Ambassadors, and like um, Enrique can 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 like justify for this, but I just start blurting out not random answers in my math <laughs> class, but like if i get the answer wrong like oh wow like at least i know what i did wrong and i'm able to learn off of my own mistakes Mm -hmm. um rather than just like oh be quiet and wait for someone else to answer when if i did have the right answer i'd not be proud of myself but if i got the answer wrong then i wouldn't also be proud of myself because my ego would go down i'm all like dang like i can't do this anymore like i'm not the smartest in the room but like it does it's not really even about that right. it's about you having the most learning right. for your, yourself and and being able to be vulnerable right yeah i think i think we all have to experience that vulnerability of of it's okay to be wrong you know you're going to learn through your failures right you're going to learn through these bumps in the road but at the end of the day, it's it's you owning and reflecting on what you want to get out of it, right? And if we just follow the the compliance, um, I guess uh, uh, directions, right? The compliance driven pieces, then we're going to get the minimal out of it, right? And so, um, so what's what's your guys's message? And, and you know, I do want to give a shout out to to Miss Casey Benton, your teacher, ELA teacher, and Miss Miss uh, Larissa Peru, who's our our math teacher and and you know I know they oversee the learning ambassadors and and definitely work a lot alongside you and and so it's important that we point out that their leadership you know has has guided you guys into this direction of of having a learner stance right and so um you know and and, and I agree with it I think I think the more you own your learning the more uh, you ask questions, the more you get out of it, it's going to prepare you later in life, right? Even though you may not get the A, even though you, you may get the B minus, you know what? You're, you're going to be better in the long run. And so, um, but what's your, what's your message to, to teachers? I want to talk a little bit about that. If we had a message for teachers in terms of your learning experience, um, what would you, what would you message to teachers, you know, and, and, and in terms of um, giving them feedback and, and maybe they can take some of this and, and use it or maybe some of them are already doing it, but to provide a, a, a better learning experience for our students, right? Because that's, that's what we're chasing at the, at the end of the day. We want our students as prepared, you know, well prepared as possible as they move, move on from high school. 
So, what would that message be? Be vulnerable, I guess. Be vulnerable? The same way that students should be vulnerable when, when saying an answer, right, and accepting if they're wrong or they're not wrong, and just having that vulnerability to put themselves out there. I feel like teachers should do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like teachers, they try to isolate themselves as well or try to put themselves in a in a different position than the student, where it's like if you just allow yourself to kind of bring yourself with the students, right, and make yourself a learner and make the students understand that you're also a learner, then it also gives that comfortability and vulnerability to the students because it's like, well, my teacher's doing this. That means I can too. Mm -hmm. It's empowering students, right? I think for me... Um, not just for teachers, but even like staff as well. Mm -hmm. um, that this movement will take time. Like it'll, sure. like the patience needed. Um, it's it, it'll 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 be a really heavy toll on a lot of people, um, especially those who are leaders in the in the collaboration of the learning ambassadors, right? Like Miss Benton and Miss mm -hmm. Peru, they've done a really really hard job um, of leading us students to where we are now. Mm -hmm. um, and like this isn't an overnight change like things aren't just going to click overnight um, and be better the next day like it, it is going to take a really long time for this but we have to have both feet in in order to we got to commit really right change. there needs to be a yeah. commitment I mean I think as as educators we're always chasing perfection right and and we're we're never going to get there you know it's 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 um it's a different recipe every year and it's a different set of students every year so that recipe has to change with the needs of students right the learning needs of students and so um obviously being intentional being prepared and knowing your students has a lot to do with it but um you know i i, I do like those points those pieces uh that you point out uh do you guys want to add anything yvonne and lucy to that um for a message, I think a lot of it for me was back to identity for a teacher and student. Um, just like, well, hold on, sorry. No, Instead rewind. Of dad, I think, rewind. Go I ahead. think more of like, um, kind of like asking why. Like there's a lot of teachers and students just going through school almost like a factory. Mm -hmm. Like you see a student, you give them the, the material, they t take the mm -hmm. test, they pass, they fail, they move on. Mm -hmm. Next class. And it's mm -hmm. just like a, a factory pumping out children, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, it's just not enough to go by the standard. Like, mm -hmm. we, I feel like as administration of students, we need to be asking why. Like, why do we come to school? Why are we doing the things that we do? Because if we just comply, it's not, there's no... Mm -hmm. There's, there's nothing happening, you know. Right. So we, we have to identify the meaning, right? Mm -hmm. what, what what do we want out of it? And at the end of the day, it's it's we want students learning, right? And so, how do we how do we customize that for 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 the students we're serving? But I think even deeper, like learning what mm -hmm. content, like mm -hmm. okay, like what does that do for me? You know, mm -hmm. what I mean, as a as a future like community member, what is that? Sure. to me so like mm -hmm. that was one thing we were looking into or I thought of when we were um, doing the the PDs it was like mm -hmm. are we using school content as a means of agency or using agentic behaviors as a means of school content mm -hmm. proficiency mm -hmm. because if you are like a math teacher I'm not gonna use calc later and <laughs> like my other you know what I mean sure, like sure. so like what skills are you teaching your students that they'll use as like adults later you know? sure sure but um, yeah and I'm sure a lot of students ask themselves that question right like how many how am I going to use this in the in the in the future and you know part of it is how our system is created you know all the way from the Department of Education and I'm not I'm not bashing them because I don't want them to come after me but <laughs> it's it's uh, there's requirements for everything right I mean there's graduation requirements right? you have to take certain classes whether you like them or not you have to take them because there's there's requirements and somebody sets a standard saying every student should have this experience before they graduate and so you know where where does that piece come in where you know we talked about student ownership where you you have a lot more say in your learning experience right I mean I think I know that 
we have our college and career academies and we offer dual enrollment classes. So there is there is a little bit of choice, right? There is choice. And there is, you know, there is ownership, but there's also these these compliant pieces, compliant classes you have to take. It's open enrollment season, and at Sunnyside, we understand that families have options when it comes to their children's education. With 21 diverse schools nestled in our vibrant community, each Sunnyside school offers a unique educational experience tailored to meet the needs and passions of every student. From innovative career and technical education programs to enriching arts initiatives, there's something special for everyone. Visit susd12.org to learn more and discover why thousands of families choose Sunnyside. You will love us. Don't believe us? Just watch. I'm curious, and I'm sure our listeners are too. What is the reaction from teachers when you guys do PDs, when you've been on panels at the Aurora Institute? Because I'm sure you're looking at body language, you're looking at behaviors, right? And, you know, you know, are they saying like, what are these little punks now? You know, these little punks sitting up here, what, what are they going to teach us, right? Mm -hmm. Or are they receptive to it where they're saying to themselves, you know what? Man, they got a point. I want to elaborate a little bit more on this, right? So, so tell me, what what is what is the reaction of teachers? They absolutely hate it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think um, you can feel the reception. Like you were speaking about the body language. Um, like a lot of teachers, when I was in middle school, they talked about well, if you want someone to know you're paying attention, you keep eye contact or you follow them with your eyes mm -hmm. or. Um, and just like those simple like body language things, mm -hmm. they teach you that, right? And like I guess you can see the reception. Is that teacher grasping it? Is it? Are they trying to understand it? Do they look like they want to ask questions? Do they look like they're confused? Are there mm -hmm. things they want clarification on? And just like you can you can kind of see it in a person, um, mm -hmm. whether you're talking to a teacher or another person. Because mm -hmm. for me, I believe this isn't something that we just do for teachers but we want to do for people as well sure right whether you're an educator a student or just someone walking down the street just being able to see an agentic style of learning and have these um characteristics is something that i feel like everyone needs on their day-to-day -day. okay cool what are the reactions do you guys see from teachers i mean you guys have done this quite a bit now with you know as part of the learning ambassadors and pd sessions and conferences, what kind of feedback do you guys get? It's a lot of support. Um, they light up seeing that, like seeing. Awesome. Yeah, like us talk about it. Um, I remember a lady cried in the conference, didn't she? Mm -hmm. She's like, it was just so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> That's you for your autograph? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of the time, um, they, it's like a lot of, um, like, hunger I want to say like mm -hmm. like I we got into a conversation with a teacher and, and it was just like question after question after question and it was just like mm -hmm. this like it was I was like it was like an hour discourse of just like um a lot of it tied back to identity too mm -hmm. and like why are we doing what we do um but the there's a lot of stubbornness in mm -hmm. some some older people so it's, so it's mixed right I mean yeah. you got some people receptive give feedback and really appreciate it you got people crying, but then you have some people that maybe not be open to it, right? You know, you use the word stubbornness, and, and may not be be open to it, right? They might be thinking, you know, what, are they, what is what is the teenage kid going to teach me, right? And so, you know, which which obviously isn't a, a learner approach, um, but you know, I'm so glad to say I, I love the word you use. You know, you see them light up, you see them light up because it also reinforces what they're trying to accomplish, right? And we have. Again, a shout out to our teachers. What they do is is hard work, right? It's it's definitely hard work every day. It's a grind, and so I have a lot of respect for for our teachers. Um, so you know, we we got a few more minutes here. I want to hit on two things. One is, what's the message to students? What's your message to students that um, that are going through this? Right? They're going through these these uh, ideas in their head. They're going through this piece of trying to become efficient learners right and get the most out of the student experience uh whether they're in high school whether in their middle school even whether they're in elementary you know what, what's your message to them i guess the biggest thing is just be serious about your learning 
right? No one will take your learning as serious as you can, right? And, um, teachers say it all the time. Once you get to college, if you turn in an assignment or not, it's on you, right? You go to class, it's on you. So, like, your learning is literally on you. Um, another thing that I've heard is just try things, right? Try a different way of taking notes. Try a different way of, of listening. Try a different way of um, approaching certain tasks. Just, like, try everything, especially right now that you're in high school. Just try it. That way, by the time you get to um, college or when you get to the career you want to do or the job you're doing, you have those skills that you know you like to do in a certain way, mm -hmm. right? And you've you've learned it, you've built it up, and you've, like, continued to use it, so now you're used to it, right? So I guess it's just be serious about everything you do, be serious about your learning, and be serious about the approach you take on things. Cool. I think also, like, um, don't be afraid as a learner. Mm -hmm. um, like even like learning material that you might not be ready for, don't be afraid to like at least look into it to see mm -hmm. kind of what you like. Because I think for high school students, it's really important to see what you like um, and what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Because like there's a lot of people in college that don't have a major or don't get a, don't get a major like two years in because they just are unsure of what they're really passionate about or what they really want to do. So in high school, it's really good to, or even just like middle school or elementary school, it's really good to look at all the options. Like look look through every single option, take a math class that you're not supposed to be taking just for fun, <laughs> but just try it. Like don't be, don't be afraid to try it. Even if someone tells you like, oh, like you're so, you're so weird for doing this or Oh, you're not ready to like take this. Mm -hmm. um, that shouldn't stop you from trying. Don't be afraid to take those risks, right? Yeah. How about you, Ivan? To add on to that, um, my message to students would be that the classroom is a community, like a small community, but it is it is a community, um, and the teachers are trying. I didn't realize that until I got to the conference mm -hmm. or at Aurora. I was like, oh, okay, like these, they actually care. Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel that way when you're sitting in a classroom sometimes, um, but it like teachers are really trying. Like they stay after school and they, they're going to all these meetings and they're doing all these things for us. And until we as students learn this and see their struggles and see them as human, because they are they are you know, right. more than teachers, you know. Right. Um, until we actively participate in the learning process, none of this is going to work. Because we do reflections and bends, but. She doesn't create it, you know, so you can write whatever the heck you want and move on. Mm -hmm. But until you as a student decide, okay, she's trying to help me develop this skill of reflection, I'm going to utilize this time, utilize this space to actually reflect on the process of things. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, none of these things are going to work until we decide to act, actively contribute to the culture of the classroom. Awesome. Powerful. Powerful, powerful, powerful. So, you know, it's, it's funny that you bring up, you know, you know, teachers are regular people, right? And I don't know exactly how you said it, but you said, and, and sometimes as, as students, because again, I remember being a student, when you run into your teacher, like at the grocery store at Food City or something, you're like, oh my God, they're human. They actually do grocery shopping and stuff like that. Oh, they wear shorts and t-shirts and, you know, so you, you're in that like shock mode because you, you always see them in, in a certain light, right? And you see them in the classroom setting and they're so formal and professional. And, and so, you know, our teachers do, you know, amazing work, you know, and I don't want to take that away from them. You know, they're, they're definitely trying. I think this has been a, an absolute powerful session in terms of just sharing your experiences, not only for our audiences that are and listeners that are students out there, but also our educators and our parents, right? Because people learn differently. And um, you have to take ownership in your learning. What do you want out of your learning? And I think you said it, you know, uh, real well, Enrique and, and, and Alonso, in terms of, um, you know, take risk. You know, don't be afraid to be wrong. Uh, don't be afraid to challenge yourself. Take those, uh, high, those rigorous classes, you know, because, you know, calculus may or may not help you in the future. <laughs> But it's, it is a great accomplishment to get to a calculus class, right? Because it's the highest probably level of math, besides trig, um, that's, that's offered at our, our high schools. And so, um, so last, last question. I know, we're, I know we're running out of time here. Is 
you know, I, I'm curious because you guys are such sharp individuals. What are your future goals? What are, what are, what do you, where do you see yourself five years from now? Where do you see yourself studying as you move forward? Um, because, you know, I, I see you guys being super successful. I really do. I think for me, I've always been a really big fanatic of math. I have to get over some some issues still, but math is math and science are a really big part of my life. We need math teachers. We, well, All right, you and I gotta talk. <laughs> or no, no, come on, don't tell me you're not gonna teach now. Well, I was gonna say engineering. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we, we have engineering classes that you can teach. Maybe you can do both. Be a Maybe. professional engineer and teach. And a teacher, yeah. But there you go. Shoot for the shoot for the sky, man. Um, but yeah, being an engineer is really what I want to become because okay. like I see all these like. I've I've seen like a list of math classes, and the class I'm taking currently is at the very bottom, yeah. and yeah. I want to take all of them. Yeah. Like I'm like I'm passionate enough to take all of them. You're gonna challenge yourself. Right? That's awesome. I, that is awesome. Uh, I want to yeah. study architecture. Um, I I don't I've been flipping through a lot of them. Like I wanted to be like a psychologist. I wanted to be a teacher. Um, I want to be architect. All these things, but um, a lot of it ties back to like helping people and helping like community um like helping the community because like after doing this work with the learning ambassadors like i don't know like i just i have this like tug to help in any way i can yeah. um so i want to go to architecture and make spaces that are more hospitable to the human being awesome that is cool man i know some architects will come see me when you get your degree i know some i, know some, I got some connects out there okay. how about you Mr. Um, Enrique, I want to get into business. Besides um, being a comedian, <laughs> uh, what, what else do you want to uh, do? Entrepreneurship <laughs> is really a big uh, one. I'm starting my own business just because okay. I want to be able to say I have my own business one day, right? That's um, right. Have my name somewhere that's going to last longer than I will. But I also want to get into real estate because my end goal is to help low-income families get their first homes because I know it's super hard to get homes, right? And just being able to understand business, the economy, government, and all that. Like, just being able to teach that to other people, help other people. Like I even said, it's just helping people has been something that I've always wanted to do. Just because yeah. I know sometimes I felt like there was no help for me. And I want to be able to be that help for somebody else. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and every time I talk to you guys, I'm so impressed, you know, by your answers, by your thoughts. And, um, you know, I always look at it as... as you know, I have the unique job of being able to serve a community that served me for so many years, you know, being a graduate of the district and growing up in this community. And I never take that for granted because it means so much to me. So, Enrique, when you're saying you want to help others and you want to help others in the community, you know, uh, you know, those individuals to earn, uh, to buy their first home, right? To have that experience, I mean that's that's just awesome, and and I know I keep saying it's the last question, but I don't want to end this conversation, <laughs> and and being that it is Teacher Appreciation Week, um, coming up here next week is is Teacher Appreciation Week, mm -hmm. you know, you guys got a shout out for for teachers, you know, anything you want to say to your teachers? Can we shout out specific people? You can do whatever you want, man. This is your show. <laughs> this is your show. Um, Miss Lopez. Shout out to Miss Lopez. Shout out to Ms. Lopez, our chemistry teacher. Yep. Okay. She's <laughs> she's the, she's the one that with the happy classroom. Okay. That's, that's, the happy classroom. that's the happy she's classroom. The, she's okay. the one that made me. Why is it so happy? <laughs> yeah. And, and he, um, how about you, Ivan? I want to give a shout out to Miss Pru and Miss Ben because they've because they they've been um, they've taught me a lot of. Um, life skills uh, this past uh, year awesome. and, and every administrator out there is doing a lot of hard work all right and we'll end with with mr enrique here oh um, miss lopez as well miss lopez well. miss peru miss betton mm -hmm. uh oh mr harris i am okay. um i love his class I just want to, like, just for most teachers out there, just seeing the mm -hmm. effort that they put in, right, yeah, to their yeah. students, just trying to make their classrooms better. I've seen teachers change their classroom just because of what they've heard our club be able to say about learning, right? So I just yeah. want to say thank you to all those teachers that have put in effort That's right. to, to make the classroom a better place for everybody. Yeah, and I'd, I'd like to end it with a shout-out to all our teachers across mm -hmm. the district. We've got 21 schools and, and hundreds of teachers out there, about 800 and some teachers 
And so I appreciate everything they do every day for students, right? Because again, it's it's a sometimes it's a thankless job, and we know it's a really real difficult job. And so we want to thank them for for all they do. And as we close out the the school year, we want them to have an enjoyable summer, and we definitely welcome them all back, right? <laughs> so big shout out to them. Well, this concludes you know our our episode here of Somo Sunnyside. I want to thank you guys for joining me, and I've learned a lot today, and I hope our listeners have learned a lot. And, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely going to encourage those individuals to, to hit the like buttons, to listen, and to join us. And make sure you guys share it with, with your buddies, right? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. This can concludes I, the episode. Can Go I for say, it. Can I say one thing to teach you? Can you can say whatever you want. Um, I know, like you said, it's a thankless job. And I know you don't get paid nearly what you should. Um, but I just wanted to say to any teacher listening, like... It may seem like these kids just come and go, but you really are raising the next generation. Like, I can count, like, every single thing my teacher said to me that shaped who I am. I just wanted to know, like, as you're listening, like, you are so important. You said 800? 800 teachers? Over 800. Over 800. That's, like, (laughs) you guys are teaching so many kids, and, like, your influence matters. What you say matters. Almost 14,000 students in the district. (laughs) Dang. That's a... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so... Every so, day counts. So right, teachers make a difference, right? I think we all have a story. When you, you know, whether whether they're educators or just any person in general, you ask them, you know, what was your student experience like? They're always going to bring it back to a teacher. They're going to bring it back to a coach, somebody that made an impact in their life, right? Somebody that they got over the hump. You know, they they gained that confidence to move forward and, and chase whatever they wanted to chase, because we've all been in the dumps before right we've all been down and we've always you know everybody needs that person to say no man you can do it mm-hmm. You're, you've got all the tools you need to be successful and and so we we all have those so special shout out to those individuals and and also those those retired educators that are out there right because they definitely put in their time as well mm-hmm. so until next time until next time thank, thank you, you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Somos Sunnyside. We hope you enjoyed the conversation and found it entertaining. If you liked what you heard, don't forget to subscribe and share our podcast with La Comunidad. For updates on future episodes and more, be sure to follow us on social media and visit our website at susd12.org. We appreciate your support and can't wait to have you back for the next episode. Hasta la próxima vez en Somos Sunnyside.